Hey, my name is Andy Robertson with CQ Academy, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the confidence interval for the population mean. All right, let's head over to the computer and dive in. All right, let's jump into this and talk about the confidence interval for the population mean. Okay, so before we get into an example, I want to explain how the confidence interval works, where does it come from, and some basic facts around it. So anytime we're trying to create a confidence interval for the population mean, it's because we don't know the population mean. And essentially, we're using a tool here in inferential statistics to take a sample and then make inferences around the population. So I want to explain how this whole thing works, and then we'll get into an example. So imagine here on the left, you have a population distribution. And this population distribution has some population mean, although to us, it's unknown right now. And what we can do is we can take a sample and use that sample to create a confidence interval that captures the population mean. And the way we do this is by using something called the distribution of sample mean. So what does that look like? So let's imagine that we took a sample of 30 units from this population and we calculated a sample mean value of 29.9, right? This is X bar. This is our sample mean. And then let's say we did that again. Let's say we took another 30 samples. We calculated another sample mean to be 30. We could do this again. We could take another 30 samples and we could find another sample mean value associated with that independent sample group. And we could do this again and again, and we could do this on and on and on down to infinity. And we would have all these individual sample mean values that we calculated within these different samples. We could take these sample means and we could form them into their own distribution. And in inferential statistics, this is a very important concept called the distribution of sample means. So this distribution here on the left is a population distribution that reflects whatever data set we're talking about. On the right, this is actually a distribution of sample means. So essentially what we're showing here is a distribution of these independent sample mean data points. Now, what we know about the distribution of sample means is that the expected value or the mean value is equal to the population mean. So if we're taking averages of averages, it should be equal to the population mean. And then there's this idea of the standard deviation. So over here, when we're talking about our original data set, our standard deviation is simply just the standard deviation. When we're talking about the distribution of sample means, the standard deviation of this distribution is equal to the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. In this particular example, our n value is 30, but that's a random value that you get to pick when you take your sample. So the shape of this distribution changes depending on how many samples you choose to take. And then essentially when we're creating our confidence interval, what we're trying to capture is a certain percentage of all potential sample mean values that could be measured in a random sample. And so we call this the confidence interval because we're capturing 95% of the distribution of sample means. Does that make sense? And yeah, essentially this is our confidence interval for the population mean. All right, so let me take what we've learned here and add the equation into it so I can show you how the equation matches up with the distribution of sample means. So here's the equation for the confidence interval for the population mean, okay? And this equation assumes that we know our population standard deviation, and it also assumes that our sample size is of sufficient quantity. If your sample size was low or you didn't know your population standard deviation, you would use the T distribution as opposed to the normal distribution, and you would use your sample standard deviation here as opposed to the population standard deviation. Other than that, the whole concept stays the same. So here's our equation, and there's really three different parameters that make up this equation. The first is what's called a point estimate. So again, we're making inferences about a population. So we're going to take a sample and we're going to calculate a sample mean. Let's say it's 29.9. That's our point estimate. Okay, that's this first parameter here. That's X bar. That is the most likely value of the population parameter being estimated. Now our sample mean won't always be equal to the population mean. It's our point estimate. It's close enough. The next is our confidence level. So here in the equation, it's reported as a z-score, but it's essentially equal to the probability that your confidence interval captures the parameter being estimated. 
So essentially, we're going to capture 95% of the distribution, and we have to use the z-score that reflects 95% of the distribution. And then the standard error is the last piece. So that remember, the standard error is simply just the standard deviation of this distribution, and it's equal to the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And then the back half of this equation, what I've highlighted here in yellow, is what's called the margin of error. So if you're working a problem or somebody says margin of error, what they're talking about is the combination of these two terms here, the z-score plus the standard error. And then you'll notice here that this is actually x plus or minus the margin of error. And so graphically, what it looks like is on the right half of the distribution, we take x and we add our margin of error. And then on the left half of the distribution, we take our x value, that point estimate, and we subtract our margin of error. And the width here, the width of this distribution, is that 95% confidence level. So we're capturing 95% of the sample mean distribution by going x plus our margin of error to x minus our margin of error. And again, this is how we calculate that 95% confidence interval. All right, let's work an equation real fast to see what this looks like. Okay, so we've sampled 40 units from our latest production lot, and we've measured our sample mean to be 10.4 pounds. We also know our population standard deviation to be 0 0.60 pounds. Calculate the 95% confidence interval for the population mean. Here's that equation again, okay? And we know our sample mean to be 10.4. And all we have to do now is plug in what we know. So we know that our sample mean is 10.4. We also know because we're trying to calculate a 95% confidence interval that our z-score is gonna be 1.96. We know our population standard deviation to be 0.60, and we know we took 40 samples. So if we do a little bit of math, we can find our interval estimate to be 10.4 plus or minus 0.186. And remember that 0.186 is that margin of error. And then remember, we have to do that plus or minus. So 10.4 minus 0.186 is equal to 10.21. 10.4 plus 0.186 equals 10.59. These are essentially the limits of our confidence interval. Now let's see what that looks like graphically. So again, remember we're talking about the distribution of sample means, right? This is a distribution of potential sample mean values. We know what our point estimate is, right? We measured our sample mean to be 10.4. We also know that we wanna capture 95% of all possible sample mean values. So on the lower end, we know that the lower limit of our interval estimate is 10.21. And on the upper edge, we know that the upper limit of our confidence interval is 10.59. And then collectively, right, the range from 10.21 to 10.59 captures 95% of this sample mean distribution. And that's why we can say that we're 95% confident that the population mean falls in this range. Does that make sense? All right, that was it for today on how to calculate the confidence interval for the population mean. I really hope you enjoyed it. I also hope you learned something. And if you liked what you saw, Hit that like button so other people just like you can find this. And if you're interested in learning and growing more as a quality engineer, hit that notification button so you don't miss anything in the future. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.